Washington State was hit so hard early on uh, by the virus, but you've received a lot of praise for acting quickly and curbing the spread there. Now, how are things looking in your state today? Well, uh, we have had early success. We have bent the curve uh, significantly, and that is due to a combination of some decisions we made fairly early that were uh, uh, the right time and the right measure and fairly decisive. But most importantly, we had 7 million Washingtonians who are some of the most scientifically literate people in the world. They believe in data and they believe in acting together. And they have been very united in following our stay home, stay healthy initiative. And they deserve the credit for having early success. Our situation right now is, is we are still waiting to get on the downward curve to start really reducing the number of people significantly who are infected. So this is not the moment, and Washingtonians uh, by vast majorities understand that it's a moment still to follow the data and still to be committed to not allowing your loved ones to die. And as a result, it's not the moment to take off all of our restrictions. So where we are at the moment is we are trying to get to two conditions. Number one, to drive down the number of infections and fatalities to a manageable level and to stand up an army, if you will, um, to really be able to test and contact trace and isolate people. You might think of it as a, a fire brigade. We call the fire department, they come. We want to have that same response to people when they have symptoms of COVID-19 so we can wrap a bubble around them and move to the second stage of this effort, which is contact tracing and isolation of people. And I'm looking forward to that happy day. Governor, this is Megan. Your state had the first known deaths from coronavirus here in the United States in February, but now autopsies have revealed that California actually had two residents pass away from the virus weeks earlier. Were you surprised to learn that? Um, how significant do you think the news is? And do you think the virus was spreading in your state for possibly longer than we're aware of? Well, actually, we're terribly sorry about those losses, uh, uh, those early losses. Every loss is a tragedy for every family. I think what it did is confirm some of our conclusions. Our geneticists, uh, our epidemiologists had already reached the conclusion that it was probably in our state earlier than the first identified uh, patient. And they can do that by looking at the mutations, the rate of mutations of the virus to depend how long it's been in, in your state. So we concluded retrospectively, obviously we did not know that then, but retrospectively that this had been brewing in our state for weeks probably before we actually had an identified patient. So I think the California experience is actually similar to ours. And I think it points out how, it is, how important it is for us to have more science about this virus. We are still learning things about this virus. And this is a war uh, based on science. And that's why we have to be guided by science, and we have to put our muscle behind good research, and we've got to follow the research wherever it goes. We need to listen to the scientists. I was disturbed about this story that a, one of the experts developing a, a vaccine may have been uh, reassigned. We, we, we can't, we, we can't uh, try to box in science by ideology or, or politics. We've got to follow all the science where it leads. So, first of all, this is Joy Behar, and, and thank you and congratulations for being a voice of reason in the middle of this chaos, Governor. I, I truly appreciate your voice. Now, here's my question. A couple of states like Georgia, Oklahoma, Colorado, and Tennessee are planning to reopen businesses, businesses like hair salons, gyms, tattoo parlors, as early as this week. Um, are you planning to do any of that in your state <laughs> in the near future, sir? Uh, no, that would be uh, very dangerous in our state right now because we still have not suppressed the virus to manageable levels, nor have we got the testing capacity, and this has been something both Republican and Democrat governors have been urging the president to be more vigorous by creating more testing capabilities so we can test the people who need to be tested. And we need both of those conditions to exist to be able to have broad reopening uh, of our economies. I think some of the things I heard, particularly about Georgia, um, uh, it doesn't even comport with what the president has said. This is the one thing that has been uh, frustrating. The president put out guidelines that basically before you do these kind of things, 
that apparently they're going to do in Georgia, you ought to have 14 days of a steady decline in your infection rate. They have not had that. In fact, I'm not sure any state has had that. So according to the president's own guidelines uh, from Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burks, uh, this should not be happening. So it is a disappointing decisions, I think, for a lot of their citizens. Now, we do think over time that we are going to be able to dial, uh, uh, to set this dial. This is not a light switch. This is a dial. So we will be able to slowly, at some point, be able to reopen some of our businesses. For instance, uh, we have a, a, a prohibition on residential construction. We're uh, one of the only states that, that has had that. It's been successful taking care of the health of carpenters and, and electricians and the like. But we do think in the next several weeks, if we get some good data and we have new modeling coming out today, we might be able to start that at some point. But uh, this is going to be a gradual thing. It should not be throwing everything open. And no, I don't think it's safe. Probably anywhere in America is right now to, to be getting a massage in that situation. Hmm. You know, uh, Governor, this is Sonny Hostin, a, a sheriff from the uh, county where the first known U.S. case was reported, recently spoke out against your stay-at-home order, and he's not the only one refusing to enforce your orders. How do you quash these um, internal rebellions and keep everyone on the same page when it comes to protecting your citizens from the virus? Well, uh, we're in good shape here. Uh there has been a, a massive indifference to Donald Trump's uh, urge to, uh, you know, stop protecting people. Uh, there is huge compliance with our order. Uh, we've had very few people not uh, respect our order. And the, the handful of people have not, we call them up and explain to them why this is important. And they go back to respecting the order. So this has been very successful. We've not had to resort to criminal prosecutions. Uh, to enforce the order. And the reason is, is people understand the common sense measures we're taking, that this is about the, the life of your loved ones. And it's really interesting, too, the, the support of Americans, it's not just Washingtonians. I've seen polling that by 80% margins, people understand the necessity of sticking with this plan in the immediate future uh, because the life of their loved ones are at stake. So there has been massive indifference to Donald Trump. Because... Sheriff, sure, we're going to come back with more with you, Governor.